It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to inspire. Our mission is to empower. And our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute this big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Kathy Nesbitt, who's in the building. She'll be talking about how to have a more joyful and sustainable life. What's going on, Kathy? How are you? Woo, woo, woo. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're super excited to have you here. Woo, woo to you too, by the way. I'm super excited. <laughs> now, can you just start off for the folks that are listening? They might be curious, like I am. In today's time, why are folks, from your view of the world, struggling to live just a joyful life? We've got technology now. It's faster than it's ever been before. We've got more stations that you can watch on YouTube or I mean, on online. They can stream and watch whatever they want. They can travel faster. So why in today's world are folks struggling with having a joyful, sustainable life? You just said it. All those choices. FOMO, man. How, what are we going to choose? We're always looking for that thing. Like, what are we going to, oh, what, what, oh, this is good, but that might be better. And maybe I should go over there. So fear of missing out and just fear in general. I think we're just really, really, we're paralyzed by fear. Not we, <laughs> they. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say to the person right now that agrees with you? And then she's watching, maybe she's a mom, maybe he's a dad. And they're like, I've got a lot going on. Um, I have a family to take care of. I have a business I'm trying to run. Uh, there might be a caregiver. I might have kids. They may have other responsibilities. Like, well, I've got so much going on right now. I'm overwhelmed. And at a time where mental health is is as serious as it's ever been in my years on the planet, would you say that person is just listening? They tune in like, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know if I can take on any more. And I know it's a very serious question, but uh, how would you answer that? What would you say to that person, please? Yes, thank you. I, I would say one step at a time, just one breath, one breathe in, breathe out. Overwhelm just means that we're we're freaking out. We just need to, ah, we didn't need to deep uh, breathe deep get into our body um, and, and out of our head because we think a lot and our, our, that voice in our head is not our friend. <laughs> you know, it's the, our brain's goal is just to keep us safe and conserve energy. It knows what to do. So it keeps going around loop-de-loop -loop in that stress uh, circle. Yeah. What does joy look like these days? Because you, I know we're having a joyful, sustainable life. But what does joy, I mean, what does that mean these days? What does it look like these days? I know this might be a lot of questions, but what does it even feel like? Just, just from your view of the world. Oh, what does it feel like? It feels like presence. My goal, my goal right now, I've recently heard the word equin, or equanimity, and it means being in a state of peace no matter what's going on. So there's turmoil. There's like being the calm in the storm, literally. And I think the difference between joy and happiness, happiness is conditional. Happiness is when I get that job or I pay my mortgage or I get the girl or the guy when I get that. But then, you know, it's short lived. It's like, oh, that was nice. OK, now what? What's next? Where joy is being able to appreciate, be grateful, just feel that whatever it is, that feeling of. Uh, I, I think it is gratitude. I think gratitude has, has, has a lot to do with joy. They're, they're definitely connected. And getting out of stress, it's really breathing. And it sounds so simple, it isn't. It's a practice. Joy is a practice. Joy is a practice. And you talk about a practice. I know the health side is very important to you as well. Talk about why, why do we as individuals struggle so much with health? And I think that may have a good deal of, to do with obviously joy as well but what's the big challenge people have being healthy these days i mean they know diet and exercise you live a long life but many folks for whatever reason they're struggling they need your help 
Oh, because there's over, right? There's so many things we started with overwhelm, the person that's in overwhelm, it's that stress. Our brain has not evolved. The little amygdala where the stress center of the brain has not evolved since prehistoric times. It kept us safe then, that was great. We needed to know if we were gonna, if we were in danger. We're not in danger now if we lose our keys, phone glasses, it's annoying if we miss the bus. How, what a nuisance, but it's not life-threatening. <laughs> Our body acts as if, so we start secreting cortisol, adrenaline, we're not breathing properly. Um, we're in fight, flight, or freeze, and stress is a killer. And it's a related to, I think, 99 something percent of today's ailments. If we can manage our stress, Jay, we are, we're in joy. Joy is the opposite of stress, in fact. Hmm. I love it. They're wondering who is this person that's talking to us right now? I mean, she's like, the world's fine. Shay, maybe she's had no problems. Maybe she's had no challenges. Give her a moment, Shay, to, to tell us her backstory. Who is Kathy? And what led her on the path to doing what she's doing now that she's so passionate about? So tell them, who, who are you and, and what makes you great these days? Oh, thank you. It is a journey. <laughs> Was I always here? Absolutely not. My working title is Kathy Crawley Laughing Bean Queen. Simple solutions for today's challenges. Worms for amending the soil, indoor composting, <laughs> sprouts for eating, grow your own, and laughter for overall health and wellness. It's the 21st anniversary of Kathy's Crawley Composters, selling worms by the pound for indoor composting. I don't have repeat customers. <laughs> Uh, it's a ridiculous business model, but I believe I'm divinely guided as we all are. It's if we listen or not. And I pay attention to the, the signs. I do now, at least. <laughs> and um, how did you how did you get into this business? Uh, so t 21 years ago in 2002, the landfill for the greater Toronto area. I'm in Canada and I'm from Toronto, so it's my hometown. Uh, closed and Canada is a pretty large country. We couldn't yeah. find a, a spot to site a new landfill and we started to export our garbage to the US. A thousand trucks a week, a thousand trucks a week. And I have a solution for the wet waste, the food waste, the, um, the paper waste and the worms are the original alchemists. They turn that material into black gold so we can grow more nutrient rich food. Oh, I, have I had my struggles at the beginning? The worms ate better than I did. <laughs> and they eat running food. <laughs> but I was on a mission. You're on a mission to, to help people, inspire people. I'm on a mission to help people understand why they want to have worms in the house, in the classroom, in the workplace, everywhere, so we can manage our food waste. You have, you're eating an apple or a banana. Where, what are you going to do with the peel? Oh, where's the worm bin? So the worms, can they convert that material. It's indoor composting. So it's your food scraps and paper. It doesn't smell for anyone that's thinking, ew, yes, worms in my house. The worms are going to stay in the, in the bin because they're eating half their weight per day. It's nature. If we look to nature, we're, we, we've got all the solutions there. Um, it's so beautiful. So, um, yeah. That's that's how I got into the the worm part. I I would I had now, was, this I believe... that was was this something that's part of your DNA in in uh, prior to recently twenty one years ago? Is this something that you've always been someone that's focused on nature, focused on making sure the environment is taken care of, or was it just just that one reason that kind of turned something for you? Ah, great question. So no, I was kind of afraid of worms. <laughs> In 93, when I bought my house, I think that, oh, there were so many signs along the way. When I look back, I can connect the dots, right? You can't connect them going forward. There, there are no dots. <laughs> Not yet. Um, <laughs> right? Looking back, I can see, oh, so 93, I bought my house. I started gardening and composting. And a teacher friend asked me to look after her worm bin for the summer. And I, I didn't want worms in my house, but I knew the value of the black gold. So I took on the challenge. It was horrible. I had fruit flies. I, I didn't want to do it again. I said I would never do it again. <laughs> in 2000, I got my, my, I graduated with my psychology degree after 15 years of um, night school. <laughs> and I got a job at a group home working with challenged adults. And oh, I thought I'd come home, Che. I thought that's why I was put on earth to, to work with a, folks with special needs. I loved it. 
I couldn't work with management. <laughs> Everyone's the boss. And, and I didn't like that. Um, so yeah, fast forward. Oh my gosh, there was a job. There was a, an ad in the paper. I got, I got injured at work. There was an ad in the paper. It said, are you a woman? Do you have a business idea? It was a six month course to write a business plan. So I turned to my husband, I said, I'm quitting my job. I'm taking this course. I'm starting a worm business. Won't this be grand? And um, yeah, so I took that business course, started my business in 2002. And here we are 21 years later. Can you imagine? Yeah. What's one of the lessons you've learned on this journey of being a business owner that you would share? I will get back to the laughter and the wellness, but I'm just curious as a business owner, what's one of the lessons that you've learned on this journey? I have adapted so, so readily. I'm, I'm kind of like a worm. I worm my way into different areas. I don't have entrepreneurial background. I was an employee for 20 years and I just saw a solution. I just knew I had to do this. There was too many signs. Um, so what have I learned? I started by wanting to, for people to have worms. I didn't know people didn't buy what they need. They buy what they want. And they definitely didn't want worms in their house. <laughs> First of all, I didn't have read. <laughs> Right. Or at least both people didn't. Maybe the gardener yeah. partner wanted it. Um, but the other one was like, no way. Right. If you were traumatized as a child, I believe a lot of people were um, after a rainy day chased around by somebody at school or a sibling. Maybe they had a fishing incident with worms. Worm is a bad word. And it's it's fascinating. I just think it's really hilarious now being in a 20. Now I can look back and laugh. <laughs> Maybe not all, the whole time. Um, yeah. So what have I learned? I, I learned to ebb and flow. I started doing school workshops back in 2002. I was like, how, if people are afraid of worms, how am I going to, why would they have them in the house? You're not looking to that yeah. as a solution. So I started to do school workshops. So now here I am, I've met students that I was in their grade three class who now they took environmental studies at college because they had worms in their class in grade three. Wow. Wow, that's super powerful. And as you were saying that, you know, what, what popped in my mind was along this journey of life, it's one of the questions I love to ask. And those folks that are at home, you can lean in now. It's one of my favorite questions to ask. But along this journey of life, what's a mentor you had that's helped you that you learned something from that you can pass on to us, whether it was a mentor in life or a mentor in business? And you at home, you get the benefit. You, the viewer, you, the listener, maybe you're on the podcast, maybe you're watching us online right now, and maybe you're live with us. We don't know. But you Woo! can look forward because you can walk away with one of the key principles um, that Kathy's kept in her heart that she's going to pass on to you. Although you'll never meet her mentor, this can help you as well. Oh, so many, so many wonderful people who helped me along the way. Um, a couple of pieces of, of advice. One is it's no for sure unless you ask. Sometimes we get afraid to ask, oh, they're going to say no. Well, if you don't ask them, then it's no already. So ask. And I do have a great story about that if you want to hear it later on. <laughs> no, we want, to, one... we, we want to hear it. You can't leave us hanging. You can't think out a good story and just leave us on the edge. So please, okay, let... please reveal what you're thinking. We want to know. Listen to this story. It's no for sure unless you ask. It's a powerful statement. Um, I chose media as my marketing strategy. So I've had hundreds of articles, TV, radio. Somebody connected me with a, um, a news station, six o'clock in the morning, news on TV. What, like you can't pay for that advertising, right? It's so beautiful. And it was about an hour and a half drive away. So I would have to leave my house, gosh, 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> I wasn't relishing the idea of driving through Toronto rush hour traffic. So I was telling somebody the story and they said, ask the station if they have a driver. And I was like thinking in my head, why would they, who am I? Why would they pick me? Why would they come and pick me up an hour and a half away? Anyway, when they called a day before to confirm that I was coming, that person's voice was in my head. I really didn't want to drive. I really wanted a ride. <laughs> so I said, you know, I'm sure I squeaked. I'm sure it was like I was going through pure pu puberty. You don't happen to have a car, do you? That could come and pick me up. <laughs> They said, I'll, well, let me go see if the car's available. Oh my gosh. They went away. The, the elevator music came on while I was waiting for the station to check if the car was available to come and pick me up the next day. She came back and said, oh, the car's available. It will be there just out of around 4.15 to pick you up. Oh my gosh, a limo came, picked, took me to the news station, waited and drove me back. Wow, it's no for sure unless you ask. 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> You've got ass. Now you have used laughter as uh, a part of your ritual. And we want to know the backstory on how you got involved with this whole laughter movement and uh, why it became a key component of who you are today. Yeah. So 2112, one more person said, ooh, worms in the house. And I felt it. I was doing this for 10 years. I thought, hmm, maybe I should just get a job. Oh, it gave me shivers. No. <laughs> Who would hire me? <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and the very next day, I, yeah, I'm divinely guided, Che. I'm, I totally am. And I, I, I think the angels for the first 10 years, I was doing what I was supposed to do, spreading the word about worms in the house and the magic of these beautiful creatures of nature. And 2012, I questioned everything and I was about to doff my worm mission. And I think the wor the angels were like, okay, she's gonna she's gonna bail. We better throw her a lifeline. <laughs> and the very next day, I was introduced to laughter yoga. And laughter yoga is not about doing yoga and laughing. It's laughter for the health of it. Laughter as an exercise. Can you imagine? And no. I loved it. So beautiful. And and just again, a few things came in my path. There was a club walking distance from where my mother in law lived. And so I started to go, it was date night, we'd go out for dinner and then we'd go to laughter club and it was so beautiful. And then I got trained as a laughter leader, then I got trained as a teacher. So now I teach others to lead. And I believe it was started in 1995 by a medical doctor in India, Dr. Gadan, Gadan, Dr. Um, <laughs> Madan Teria, sorry. <laughs> and his goal is world peace. There are over 120 countries laughing now. And wow, so I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled to be on this, this journey. We need it more than ever. Wow, that many countries that, are, that have laughter in it now? Can you imagine? Wow. Yes. What have, you, what have you enjoyed most about being a part of this whole movement? Because I, I look at it more as a movement now, a group of folks, and not just ha, 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 but a whole movement towards what you're talking about, which is being joyful and having a sustainable life. So if you can, if you can connect the dots for us, right? There's sustainable life, then there's laughter and joy. Can you bring the two together so we understand what sustainable life is? Is that just being consistent? What's your view? When we feel good, we do good. When we're laughing, we're in charge of our own pharma, pH, <laughs> right? When we're laughing, we're secreting the love drugs, the happy chemicals, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins versus cortisol and adrenaline when we're stressed. We're fully oxygenated. We can live without food and water for a few days. We can only live a few minutes without oxygen. Our brain is a machine. It requires 25% more oxygen than the rest of our body. It's scientifically proven that laughter is the best medicine. And so Dr. Kateria's goal is world peace. He was writing an article in 1995 about laughter and came across all of this research. And he thought, if laughter is the best medicine, why don't we just laugh? So it's a series of games. It's deep diaphragmatic breathing. That's what, that's the yoga part. And it's the practice of laughter. It is a practice. We don't, we, we know that meditation is good for us, but we don't meditate once and, and we're done. We don't go for a walk once and go, okay, I don't need to walk anymore. We need to do it every day. So same with laughter. We need to laugh every day. So we're secreting those love drugs, oxygenating our body, and we're completely present when we're laughing. Have you ever counted how many times a day you laugh? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. You, is it like a little counter, a little meter? You say, okay, this is how much I've laughed today. I'm just curious. I'm laughing all the time in my resting face. I make sure that my resting face is smiling because when we're smiling, people think we're up to something, first of all. Like they're mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, when I'm walking around anywhere, I'm, I, I, I'm very conscious of always having a smile on my face because we're aware when we see somebody like grinning, we're like, what are they up to? What's going on? I don't know why you have to be up to something. <laughs> yeah, I love you it. You know, we go ahead. We go ahead. No, I just I, I just think that it's 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 not so simple, but it, it really is. It, it really is that simple. Laughter has changed my life. It saved my worm business. 
because I realized when people said, ooh, worms in the house, they weren't saying, ooh, Kathy, you're gross, <laughs> or ooh, about me. Maybe they were, but you know, it was about the concept that I was offering. So now I bring them joy and laughter. I raise the vibration when we're laughing. We're not feeling bad and stressed and anxious and all of those low vibrating activities. Laughter is high vibration. It takes time to get up here. It takes time. It's a practice. And here's another beautiful part about laughter. The, the, the body doesn't know the difference between real and simulated laughter. So we can laugh. <laughs> and, and our brain's like, oh, pew, 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 secreting those love drugs because we're laughing. Hey, I must be happy. So we can override our brain. Don't let your, your brain be the driver. We need to feel. And, and here's a beautiful thing about stress and all this trauma that we're carrying. I'm sorry, folks, but we need to feel it and then we can release it. Once we can feel it, we're ready to deal with it. We're ready to cope with it. When it shows up again, where it's like something happened as a child or at some point where you're, you know, you're holding on to it, when it comes back again, maybe it's time to look at it and go, thank you for showing me the lesson that you showed me. Whew, I release you. And then, wow, then that energy is released and you have it for higher vibration activities. God, I love it. Said so well. We have a segment here called Today is My January 1st. Now, for those folks that are tuning in for the very first time, welcome to the family. We're glad to have you here. For all the folks that tune in every night at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you know we're going to say it today. Today is my January 1st. Happy New Year to you, by the way. Doesn't that feel good? Now, for the new folks, I'm going to encourage you to find us over at YouTube. Follow us so we can follow you back at YouTube or our Instagram. Just type in at I A M. And in my name, Shay Brown. I am Shay Brown. Let's connect. Okay. Now, here's what today is my January 1st represents it represents our personal mantra. It's a fresh start. Today is my January 1st, is a do over. Today is my January 1st, means my past. No matter what that past is back there, no longer equals the future. So my question to Kathy as she's sitting on the other side is, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And what was one of your January the 1st moments? Oh, so again, so many moments where it's like, ah, oh, from this moment on, greatness is coming. And I, and I do believe in miracles. I do believe that we are given the opportunity of a lifetime every week. We just have to be looking for it. So I would say back in 2012, 2012, um, when that person said, ooh, worms in the house, and I felt it and heard it, that was my, the next day was my January 1st and it changed my life. I was introduced to laughter. Laughter goes with everything. And about sustainability, all of my offerings are about living a wonderful joy-filled life worms for amending the soil so then we can grow more nutrient food so we can be healthier same with sprouts growing our own we get nutrient rich food it's the original fast food and then laughter so we're in charge of our own pharma this whole this trifecta before 2020 i thought it was a juggler what do you need i have it <laughs> when i had all that time to think i was like oh my gosh all of my offerings offer a beautiful life Love it, man. Uh, first, let me say thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. You're amazing. Uh, I love the smile. I love the energy. I love the conversation. And I want to have a joyful, sustainable life. Come on, somebody. Can I do that, everybody? Yes, I can. <laughs> I believe that I can. Um, so I have a two-part question as we close out. Number one, are you taking on any new clients? And number two, how can folks best connect with you over and beyond the conversation you and I are having right now? Oh, yes. Oh, what's going on? I have so much laughter is taking over my life. I'm going into corporate now for team building to help. You know, now we're working back in person. People have forgotten how to how to communicate and look eye to eye. Um, I'm working on a one woman show <laughs> that brings all of my offerings together, but it's called the working title is Life Lessons from a Worm Bin. <laughs> And it's all of the things that I've learned over 20 years selling worms by the pound. I would love to give a shout out right now to Olivia Vo for introducing us on LinkedIn. I, I'm so grateful for having Olivia come into my life during this cuckoo time. And how can people connect with me? I have a free Tuesday club on Zoom, 30 minutes of super fun self-care. It's 9.30 a.m. Eastern. 
and it's kathysclub.com is my laughter page. Come and check it out. It, it, like just experience the magic of laughing for the health of it. Take control of your life by laughing. Take control of your life by laughing. That's so important. Thank you so much. First, let me again say thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show, Kathy. We appreciate you. Can't wait to have you back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tay. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you to the audience. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Without you, well, there is no show. So make sure you look below. Make sure you connect. And then let me go ahead and say this. As I love to say 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every night, every time we have this conversation, I want to remind you, and it's good for me to remind myself as well, is that you're amazing. You're freaking awesome. You are spectacular. And for you, today is your January 1st. And because of just that one reason, I believe your best is still yet to come. They ain't seen it yet. Your best is yet to come. Your best is still yet to come. With that being said, my name, in case you forgot, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, time is long. Life is short. You got to live in that moment. Well, guess what you got to do? You got to make it count. God bless me. Wish you success. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Kathy. We out of here. Peace, everybody. Yep.